<laughs> so there's something you would normally consider a noise. Yeah. But and any one of them in isolation, you wouldn't associate with pitch. But when you hear the pitch difference mm -hmm. between the saw being, you know, run down, you you, you and now think about how how extraordinary that is. The brain is able to map something it's never heard before. It's never heard Beethoven's fifth played on power tools. Mm -hmm. From just a few notes, and even with my odd rendering of it, your brain was able to find some trace that mapped it to Beethoven's fifth mm -hmm. in its orchestral version. Right? I didn't tell you ahead of time it was Beethoven's yeah. fifth, but you found it. Your brain had to search through, and we don't have a computer that can do that. The, f the most powerful computer at NORAD or wherever mm -hmm. can't take a power tool version of Beethoven's fifth and tell you what song it is. It can't take the live yeah. version of And She Was with the mm -hmm. studio version yeah. and tell you it's the same song, but the brain does that immediately in seconds. Hey! You asked if, if do we, if foreign language isn't a text, do we hear it as sound, as pure sound? Um, no. We, we know that we, we know there's a, we know there's intention there. We know yeah. there's, uh, okay. we recognize, whatever the deep structures of a language, yeah. even if we don't know what's being said. And the brain recognizes that it's language and mm -hmm. not not an environmental noise or speech or an animal call. The brain understands, even the click languages, like OTA, you know, where you have all these, uh -huh. these clicks going in and out that uh -huh. you don't hear as, as you know, the regular syllables we have, uh, we recognize that that's the language, our brains do. And um, it's, it's interesting because we don't, there, there are not universal rules, not, questions in all languages don't end with a rising intonation. Mm -hmm. And sadness isn't conveyed in the same way, and it leads to, you know, some terrible cultural misunderstandings. Yeah. In, that, in that there aren't these universals. We, you know, I, I, I mean, and it's not just the language, but these paralinguistic gestures that people make. This is not universal for yes. Mm -hmm. I went to Greece, I tried to hail a cab, I said, you know, can I, can I get in? The guy goes like this, I grab the door, he speeds away. It turns out in Greece, this means no. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, what about animals, though? When we hear a, a dog gets paw stuck in a door, or the, the howl yeah. deeply affects us emotionally. Yeah. It does, and uh, there are there are some universals. I think crying and whimpering and screaming uh -huh. are are not really speech, but again, they're sort of paralinguistic devices, vocalizations that do mm -hmm. have some um, not only cross-cultural but cross-species. I think you know a whimper mm -hmm. is is understood by any species. Um, I went to here this musical group last night and one of the members is was involved uh, it still is involved in a an elephant orchestra okay <laughs> uh, the elephants play gongs and large marimbas and some of them hold harmonicas in, in their trunks and do they have roadies to carry their trunks yeah yeah they have people that <laughs> yeah they have people they do have people that well to like Get them. They seem to actually enjoy the performing. I have other friends who who work with elephants. I'm not sure if it's the same, the same elephants that uh, that paint abstract paintings. I've seen those. And part you know the people who do that. Yeah, and part of that is um, a provocation. Part of it's yeah. a provocation, saying, "What makes? Would you? Could you tell the difference between yeah. a?" Uh, a de Kooning and, and yeah. the work of Daisy here. <laughs> and sometimes it's pretty hard. And it, it's interesting that some of the elephants, each elephant has its own style. Yeah. Um, of course, part of it is just a, a, a provocation. Well, so the, I guess the, the, thing, the thing that relates to music is, you know, when you hear birds singing or you, you, we talk about dolphin song, mm -hmm. to what extent is that music? as opposed to just... Communication. Yeah. Um, I don't mean just communication, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, is it music or is it their language? And their language just happens to sound like music to us. Yeah, or is birdsong sung for 
kind of pleasure, or right. is it, or is it just to announce I'm here, or I'm ready to mate? There's no evidence that a bird sings just because it's fun to sing, or because it likes what it's hearing. How would you find that evidence? Well, it's difficult, but you look at the. Um, situations that they sing in. If the bird uh -huh. believes that it's truly alone, and you can convince the bird that there's oh, no then other... It, then it might just so, silent. Right. Um, and you look at the outcome of the singing. The singing for many birds is to defend the people lock in solitary start singing? Well, maybe a few. Well, maybe. <laughs> yeah. I would. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I do sing to myself when I'm by myself. A lot of us sing in the shower. Yeah, yeah. It's true. But birds um, tend to sing only when there are other conspecifics there. Uh huh. Uh, or when they're, you know, they sing to defend territory to attract mates. Basically, that's it. Mm -hmm. if, if, from the available evidence. And they're the closest thing we've got to something that makes music. Or something that sounds, you know, even Mozart thought that birdsong was music. He based some of his works on birdsong. Mm -hmm. And of course, it does sound like music. It has melody, it has rhythm. Some of them can generate. Uh, an almost endless um, stream of variations from a core set of, of motifs. Mm -hmm. But it seems as though it's really for communication, which doesn't diminish it at all. It just it's a different thing, makes though. it separate from music then. Mm -hmm. You were interested in trance states. Yeah, I still am. Uh, well, I did a little uh, research I'm after you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm interested for a few reasons. Uh, one, because there's a lot of popular secular music that I think borrows a lot of a lot from uh, sacred music. Um, uh, a lot of the, I guess, what you would call sacred music that has its roots in Africa and in other places. Uh, part of it generates a kind of trance state, a trans, a trance state, or or yeah. transcendent state. Oh, in is the list short for transcendent? Maybe, and, and it's the, in the listener, and sometimes in the player, but really it's in the, in the listener. Yeah. Um, and I've thought sometimes popular music, a performance, or oh, sometimes absolutely. it yeah, yeah. gets you, or it, if it doesn't do that all the way, it gets you right on the edge of it. And oh, you, yeah. you see through the crack in the door or whatever, you can see that, wow. There's a, uh, there's a, mu this music is taking me to a place that generates all those kind of s vaguely spiritual phrases like, I got out of myself, or I, yeah. I you know, had an out-of-body experience, or, you know, all those kind of things. The way people talk about, often talk about music, they use these spiritual terms. And, and, and I thought, okay, there's something going on that I don't know what it is, but it's obviously there. These are these kind of things have something in common. That's touching another part of the brain. That's that we link to a kind of spiritual or religious experience, bec probably because it takes us out of ourselves. Yeah. Um, in that in that kind of sense, for want of some better word. No, I think that's a perfect description of it. The out of ourselves. Yeah, I think part of it. it it's out of yourself, and I think you become mm, not only f uh, your ego, it's a little bit of ego loss, which I can Eastern philosophy re recognizes as being a kind of transcendent, pleasurable experience, but it's also you become part of the kind of social uh, context. If you, it often happens with around other people. You become kind of one with all these other people that are there, w with the kind of social group. So yeah. it's like, like, like all of a sudden you're an ant, yeah. and you're part of the, the hive, yeah. and, you just, and it's this wonderful feeling. Yeah. And then it goes away. But, but you've, you've touched that for a second. Uh, I'm certainly not an expert, but I've also noticed that sometimes when the intention is to generate that kind of, uh, kind of, whatever neurological break. Yep. There's a musical break, um, as as you were saying about that. Music creates an expectation, then breaks it, then yep. stays yep. on that course for a while, then breaks yep. it. I think the same ha thing happens when, you, whether it's uh, drum induced 
there'll be a moment where there's a drum pattern set up, a rhythmic yeah. pattern set up, and people are moving to it. And then the drummers either suddenly hit harder or they'll start playing another rhythm on top of the rhythm that exists, like yeah. cross rhythms, so that it's usually bum, 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 yeah. bum, 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 you're, you're all of a sudden being yeah. kind of, you're, you're going down this road and now you're being kind of spun around yeah. and going down the road. Mm -hmm.